Hi everyone, my name is Andres Pimentel. I make travel videos, uh, documentaries, video essays, and today I want to share a story that's mine and many other people's. Being bisexual still freaks some people out. The idea that you can have two dads or two moms bothers some people. The idea that LGBTQIA sex education is part of the conversation makes some people uncomfortable. I hope through my story and the stories I share, I'll change some hearts and minds, maybe even just a little bit, help people realize that the quote-unquote issue of sexuality is a story about people with hopes and dreams. For me, coming out as bi was pretty simple. I wrote a character and I realized that the character was bi and it was based off of me. I told my friends. A few years later, I came up to my parents and with little help, they too understood and respected me. Well, I guess the coming out experience is a continuous experience, per se. I feel like with certain people, it was very hard because, you know, it's something that's looked down upon. It's something that people feel that is disgusting. It's out of the norms. And then there's other people who, like, kind of already knew and they were just comfortable with it and they just loved me for who I was. Well, it was very much a case of I was in the closet, but the door was made of glass. Uh, it was actually not difficult for me because when I came out to myself, when I was like 15 or less, I literally just like, was like, is this normal? Does everybody like feel attracted to women all the time and also men? Like, really, really easy actually. At some point in my life, I think I just naturally gravitated towards a group of friends who were all pretty much LGBT or extremely like liberal. So coming out to my, the first person I ever came out to, who was my friend, wasn't as hard as I expected, because then she came out to me as well, that same conversation, so it was nice. We, felt, we both felt uh, seen, and it was, it, was a, it was a good moment. I was very lucky that I grew up in a city, Wellington, that was known for being very open and inclusive. So it was never a big deal. I never really had a moment where I had to be like, oh, guys, I'm not straight. It was very much just like, yeah, that girl's fit. There was never any pressure on me in any way. Not from my friends at all, which is pretty, pretty amazing. I was very lucky that I had a mother that I always knew was bisexual. I don't remember her telling me she was bisexual. I just always knew. Of course, I had a father. <laughs> But when it came around to me questioning my own sexuality, it was still quite an anguish. Uh, even after all of these kind of inclusive and, and loving environments that I was in, there was still a lot of internal torment that you get <laughs> out of maybe I'm just lying to myself. Maybe I am straight. Wait, no. Maybe I'm just lying to myself, maybe I'm just gay and I'm just trying to pretend that I'm not. But when I came to my parents, it was actually a funny story because I was drunk. So, <laughs> uh, it was a horrible, horrible night. What is one of the most horrible nights in my life? But like the coma part was not the horrible part. I just had a discussion, I was angry, I was drunk, I was crying. And then I, my dad was just like sitting next to me and was like, and what happened? And I was like, can I tell you something? Like after all my crying. He was like, yeah, I'm bi. And he was like, what's up? <laughs> I was like, easy. My parents weren't really supportive because they really don't understand what, what it means to be so low. I, we support you. We don't know what you're doing. And then they are killing us. You know, there's some people who did, you know, not take it very nicely, you know, lightly. I'm sorry. That's, that's tough. Uh, I know. It's okay. We live in a world where people are still not comfortable. But then coming out to family was a little different. Like coming out to my mom wasn't as great. She took a while to accept that. And I also felt scared that she wouldn't, even though she said she did. So it was just like a little uncomfortable for both of us. And then as I said, there's like multiple coming out moments. There are people you come out to and they're like excited for you and excited that you came out to them. And there are people that you come out to and just decide not to speak to you anymore oh. like i also had an experience so it's it's a very very different experience according to who you come out to i 
always knew bisexuality was a thing and I always just sort of accepted it was a thing but never and never felt like the right I guess label for me and I always preferred to say I was gay not necessarily because I 100% believed I was fully homosexual like but more about the fact that I kind of used it as an umbrella term like people would use the term queer. I never really formally came out to my parents or anything like that. It was just one day I said I was going on a date with a girl <laughs> and they were just more concerned about the time I'd get home rather than because <laughs> I was like, well, like 15 at the time. They're more concerned about that than actually <laughs> who this person was. <laughs> so I was lucky on that front. And then the flip side of that and I think it's a little bit different to most people, is that I'd kind of settled in a place where I was very comfortable with the idea of liking girls, and that's okay. And then my partner came along and threw a massive stone in the works, because <laughs> I was fully convinced for two weeks that we'd spent traveling together, that nah, this, this is an attraction. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> nah. Uh, turns out it is. <laughs> and turns out I have started accepting that, hey, like, I am bisexual, like, that is so that I equate with myself. Falling for my, my partner caused me more anguish than actually finding I was attracted to girls. I felt like I'd done the legwork. I was happy with that label and how I felt, that identity for myself. And then I met my partner and it completely threw me off and completely shifted my idea of what my identity was. Being attracted to a guy caused the internal struggle <laughs> of shifting who I thought I was. That was definitely a struggle of coming to terms with that in my head, but also being and falling in love with this person <laughs> all at the same time. <laughs> I saw a TED talk about bi erasure. It's something that's very real and affects a lot of people. I myself have only felt discriminated for being bi once. Luckily, I have a lot of friends and family that support me for who I am. Going back to the first question about my mom, because she didn't understand it for a while and would push me towards the straight, straight side of it, being like, if you can choose either, why not just go the easy way? Why not just choose guys, basically? And we've had multiple conversations about that that were just not very fun. One of my best friends, I told her uh, I'm bisexual. She was like, are you sure? Because uh, all of the guys you have dated, they were guys, they were men. Are you sure you're just not, I don't know, confused? I think that's the word bisexual to hear the most. You're confused. You're just confused. And it's like, I wish I was confused. I'm not. <laughs> if I cannot choose the eight men, I would, but I cannot. I definitely got the feeling, especially in Wellington is a very small city, so as a result, the LGBT community is quite small, and it was felt like, okay, my say around problems that I'm facing, discussing annoying things around a drink in a bar and things like that, felt less valuable because I happened to be with a man at that point in time. The struggles that I had when I was with women were felt less valuable because I'd chosen some, like another path. Yet it was never blatant, but there's certainly the culture. It was never thrown in my face, but I definitely felt the erasure. <laughs> yeah, it was a bit odd of this community that I kind of grew up in, basically. I was suddenly not quite as connected to them anymore because I was with a man. Yeah, I could feel it because I feel like people think like you just want the best of both worlds. You're like, no, I just like this one at the second or this. Like people can't feel like it can't be like 50-50 because like people are like, who do you like? Which one do you like more? And it's like, it's not about more. It's just about the connection and, and all that type of stuff. And then you have people like, 
you know it's different i feel like it's different for girls than guys when you kind of say it because i feel like it's more guys get more shamed for liking the same sex and girls are like some people are more open into it because you know people are just nasty you know i don't know it's like it's one of those like weird it's, it's like those like it's like a weird in between and i feel like it sucks because it's like i feel like i don't like how it's harder for guys you go on the internet and you see something that's like it kind of doesn't necessarily say bi people shouldn't like agree like interact with this like this isn't for you but it's kind of implied it's very all the kind of bi erasure stuff that i've experienced has been very quiet and sinister not so much outright in my face in a way i'm actually kind of glad like i'm currently in a relationship with a man in a way it's nice because i didn't have to worry for example like about introducing him to my parents because well it's not a woman so they're not gonna have a problem with it are they in the same way that i never have to worry about holding his hand um in the street i don't have to worry about someone you know shouting anything obscene at me because they think it's wrong or whatever because to the average person we're just a straight couple hanging out having a good time and i've had multiple friends i've had this talks with like if you talk to someone uh, being a bisexual woman if you talk about guys i guess you feel a little less validated than if you talk about girls. So most bisexual women, myself included, I know, were like, oh, look at that girl. She's so cute. She's so pretty. But when it comes to a guy, we're just like, not even mentioning that because that's too straight. We need to fit, you know? I was too straight passing <laughs> for me to be properly gay, to properly understand issues and properly bond over struggles that any relationship have and i think it it is this idea of you don't experience the same level of trauma the same level of oppression so therefore your opinion around that trauma and oppression is not as valid as someone that you know, had it worse off than you or and that definitely causes a little bit of validation issues in terms of yourself like am i this is something that i'm really struggling with should i actually be struggling with this is this is this valid <laughs> there's always going to be someone worse off but for some reason you've got to try and fight for your own validation within the lgbt community and i think definitely asexuals aromantic bisexuals anyone that that can be straight passing or cis passing can feel a little bit alienated for not being oppressed enough <laughs> you're trying to find a community and you <laughs> you're trying to be part of a community that like you said is founded on inclusivity and being who you are yet because you haven't experienced the same level or assuming the same level of discrimination therefore you're not worth the same support as someone that's gay or a lesbian or someone that isn't straight passing it's sad that you kind of have to well, it's not like you're hiding but you kind of have to be like oh this is kind of good i guess i'm not super oppressed in public it's nice you know and sometimes i just I feel grateful for the current situation that I'm in because it, yes, it does make it easy. Like just this current relationship makes my life a tiny bit easier. That doesn't diminish the fact that I am a bi person. Exactly. It's just like, I can be like, well, glad I don't have to be stressed about this one specific thing that I could be stressed about in a different situation. It's kind of like, I'll take it, you know, I'll take it. I'll take the, the tiny bit of freedom, teeny tiny, but yeah. When you're with your gay friends, they're like, you're the straightest person there and with you're with your straight friends you're the gayest person there so it's like i don't belong anywhere i think that even like in the lgbt community there are things that needs to be changed because you can't say you can't have the letter in there and also treat people wrong because you know we matter too just like anyone else I'm very lucky that I live in Peru where I'm protected 
and I also live in the United States sometimes and I'm pro protected there too. But I realize that that's not the same for everyone. Recently, a study felt compelled to ask if bi men even exist. Luckily, the study came back as positive. Yes, we do exist, which is nice because I was beginning to feel fictitious. According to the BBC, there are 69 countries where homosexuality is forbidden. So I do acknowledge my privilege of being able to have this conversation. Quartz reports that 3% of people identify as bi. Most of those are women. Even in this documentary, you'll see all my interviews are with women. I have room to grow as far as being involved in the LGBTQIA community. This is my first step of many more steps, I hope. Thanks so much for watching. I'd love to hear your stories too down below. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And I'll see you next week. If you have any ideas, leave them below. Hope you like my new backdrop. I think it's pretty cool.